Okay, hey guys. Today I'm going to be showing you how to play Shepherd of Fire. It's the, the first track of the new Avenged Sevenfold album, Hail to the King. It's a really, really sick album and a really cool song. Uh, so I thought it would be fun to check out. Also, it's really, the, the rhythm part is really easy to play. Well, uh, I think so at least. Um, but yeah, it's not, it's not hard. It's uh, a real kind of old school metal feel. Uh, Metallica, it's very, I think it's Enter Sandman kind of vibe. You hear by the drums and stuff. If you haven't checked out the album, if you don't like Avengers Sevenfold, check out the album anyway because it really is killer. Even if you don't, even if you don't like their previous stuff, their new stuff is really sick. Um, yeah, the new album is great. So anyway, we're gonna get straight into it. Um, not a hard song. A lot of uh, the bunch of different sections that we're gonna check out, um, and then we'll be able to put it all together into the whole song. Um, I'm not gonna do the solo in this video, but I might do it after this. Um, depending on if I if I feel up to it, it is, it's pretty toughy. But anyway, uh, okay, let's go for it. So uh, it starts off uh, with the kind of the main riff. This riff is, it's, it's sort of present throughout the whole song. It holds everything together, pulls it all in. Very simple riff. Uh, it's a very cool D, uh, D harmonic minor vibe. Um, as you'll see, putting lots of emphasis on uh, the, what is it? The what what notes are we playing? Uh, oh, on the on the on the natural seven, the second and the flat third, which really gives you that D harmonic minor sound. Um, okay, so it starts off with uh, an open. Oh, by the way, just sorry before we start, we're in drop D tuning. Obviously, arrange sevenfold metal kind of stuff. Drop D is pretty standard, so just make sure you're in that. Otherwise, it's going to sound like crap. Okay, cool. So it starts off with um, this little riff. And what that is, it's an open D string. Then on the A string, you're playing five, eight. Then open D again, four, seven. So it's open, five, eight, open, four, seven. Um, and make sure you're getting the palm muting on the the, the low D. You want to get that nice uh, that chugga chugga kind of sound. You don't need a palm mute on the fifth string so much. Uh, you do want it to ring out a little bit. Okay, so this is this is in the intro. Um, Gates plays it quite open, so you'll see it's like uh, sorry. Go for a while and then come again. And now this time, the second time, you're going to bend down or up. Sorry, on the seventh, on the seventh fret a little bit, uh, just a just a half step. Um, okay, so you just repeat that a couple times. Give it a little bit of vibrato just to add something there. Okay, then what happens, I'm trying to just remember the song from memory, is the rest of the band kind of starts coming in and doing their thing, um, and you start just looping the riff over and over and over with no, no kind of pauses in between, so you get... the rhythm there a little bit I'm sorry but that's kind of what you do you just play in the same riff you know if you play along to the song obviously you'll be able to pick it up a lot quicker um, I would play along to the song but I'm having a lot of audio problems trying to get the song playing at the same time with me playing over and I know when you're listening to this the D string sounds really bad uh, it's clipping the mic a lot I don't know because it's the crappy the crappy webcam mic that I'm using so I'm sorry maybe one day I'll invest in like a proper microphone and then you can you can hear you can hear me in all my glory. Um, okay, so you've got that riff down. Um, then the band, they jam for a while. And then in the background, because uh, that's kind of like the lead guitar part almost, the rhythm guitar is just playing an open D chord. Let it ring, let it ring, let it ring. And then you play eight, seven. see 
see that follows along with the, uh, I think it's like a brass and a string section or whatever playing in the background, it follows along with that. Um, okay, and then, like I said, the band is jamming through it, and then uh, there's a kind of this little breakdown bit where the, the whole band goes and plays the... And then it really gets pumping into the song, and now the whole band's playing. And what you do is you're playing the same riff with a slight change. Instead of just playing the one, the one note on the D string, you now play the whole the open D chord. Uh, so the first the three strings, uh, six, six, five, and four. Um, so then you get this effect. So you play the riff three times, and then you go to the 8-8, eight, 5-5. Eight, five, five. Sorry, I don't think I, I said that earlier when I played the notes. Uh, we'll just put it 8-8, 5-5. Eight, eight, five, five. Uh, there's a little bit you can add in kind of at the end of each, each little cycle uh, that I like to do. Uh, so it's where you just after you play the, the 4-7, you're giving a little palm hit on the, on the low D and then over the chord. Okay, so that's kind of um, the basic intro and you'll see that <clears throat> that riff gets used a lot throughout the song. Um, that's that's a really cool riff. I really think uh, they that D harmonic minor vibe is is really really cool for it. Um, okay, then we get into the the verse. Um, this bit I found a little bit tricky rhythmically, um, but it's not it's not tricky. Well, it's not it's not hard. I found it a little bit tricky. Maybe you won't. Maybe you will. Whatever you know. Okay, so what you're doing is you're playing the open D for the first two beats of the bar, and then. Uh, uh, sorry, for the first beat of the bar, I think, and then you play on the second beat. Then you start with just riffing on the on the open D string. You're playing that note seven times. So two, three, four, five, six, seven. If you're playing alternate picking and you start with the downstroke, you'll end with the downstroke as well. So that's a good way. That kind of helps me remember, uh, you know, where I should start the riff. So then for the verse, you have. Open, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, sorry, no, sorry, I think it's coming on the on the third beat of the bar. It doesn't it doesn't matter. I mean if you know if you don't really know about beats and, and stuff in the bar, it's fine. Just listen to the song, you'll be able to feel where it comes in. It's in the middle of the bar. Um, so yeah, the third the third beat. Okay. On that last note, if you want to just give it a bit more kind of punch, you can, you can play the, the sixth and fifth strings open. It sounds pretty cool. And then you go into the eight, eight, five, five. Um, okay, so on the Kind of play this, you play, I think it's four bars, or four, you play the riff kind of four times, and on the fourth time, is it? Okay, no, sorry, on the third time, we went to this, the eight, eight, five, five. What I like to do on that little cycle of, of this bit is after you play the, just add in another little downstroke. So it's open, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then another downstroke. Before you go to eight, eight, five, five. You don't have to. I think it just helps to kind of uh, differentiate the sections a little bit. It helps me keep time, especially. Um, okay, so if you're playing that whole riff, then here's how it sounds. Oh, sorry. Um, play those, you play that whole thing twice, 
and then what you do is now you go to a, a bar chord on the power chord on the seventh fret. that intro riff again. So I would recommend um, uh, just with, with that with that intro riff the finger the fingering that you want to use is first finger on five and your pinky on eight and then again you shift back one space and you play first finger on four pinky on seven. Um, that for me is just seems like the best way to play it. Okay, so, uh, sorry, then back to where you are, you're playing 7. I recommend doing it with your third finger because then you're already in the right position to uh, play this riff. Uh, with this riff, I think what you might be able to do also is instead of going 5, 8, open D, go 5, 8, open A also sounds fine. It doesn't really matter because it's all it's all within the scale, so it's kind of cool either way. So you can either play it, or you can play it. Okay, so now if you put that into context with the rest of the verse that we had before, you get this. Okay, so that's it, so... Uh, and just before you go to the 8, 8, 5, 8, sorry, there's an open, open D. So 7, 4, uh, 5, 8, open D or A. 5, 8, A, open A, 4, 7. Okay, now this is the this now leads into the chorus. This chord progression I think is just sick. It's so it's such a cool little little thing. Uh, so what you're doing is you're playing open, open chord, two, three, and then ten. So it's and this is, this is quite fast. So it's it's following along with what the what the guy what uh, shadows are singing. It's follow, following the melody line. So it's open, two, three, ten, ten, and then we're going to go into the chorus riff now. Um, okay, so just a couple times at kind of the full tempo. Um, it always helps when you when you have like big jumps and you have to move back fast to always look where you're going to go rather than looking where you are. Because obviously if you've been playing for long enough that you can kind of take on a song like this, you should be pretty comfortable with going with your hands all the time. So always look to where you want to go, that'll help you a lot in terms of actually getting there. Okay, so just a few more times. Okay, so that then leads us into the chorus. And the chorus, really, really straightforward and simple, very open, uh, you know, big power chords. It's eight, eight, ten, ten. Go back to the intro. 10, 8, 8, 10, 10, uh, back to the riff. Uh, rhythmically, for this, but you can kind of do almost whatever you want. Uh, it's it's pretty open. You can just, you can get it just hang there. Uh, I like to play a little bit of the rhythm pattern which goes
Mm. Um, but again, you can kind of do whatever suits you. Feel, feel whatever sounds right to you is usually pretty cool. Um, okay, so yeah, like I said, into the, into the intro riff, this definitely playing E this time, the open string, so open, 5, 8, open, 4, 7. Um, okay, so you play, you play that whole thing twice, um, and then the third time when you get back to the 8, you go, you play the 8, and then you hang on the 5, and that's where the chorus ends, and you can just hang there for a little bit, and then the drum cues you back into the back into the verse. So the whole chorus is a cool little intro riff, which sounds something like this. drum roll, it's not really a roll, but a little ka-tink. That's exactly what it sounds like, ka-tink. And back into the... Verse. Um, okay, so then everything just repeats again. Um, exactly like it was for the previous stuff. Um, this is the first time that I've ever done like a, a how to play a song video, so it might be a bit kind of bad. Uh, but let me know what you think. If you're enjoying it, if you think it's useful, please tell me. If you have any suggestions, maybe I should stop speaking so much and just play, or maybe I should do some other stuff, or you need more explanation, or whatever. Let me know. I'm totally open to suggestions. Um, okay, so that's the verse and the chorus and the verse and the chorus. Uh, now comes the solo. Like I said, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna show you how to play the actual solo. I'm gonna show you how to play the rhythm underneath the solo. I might do the solo after after this video. I have some time. Um, okay, so the solo it now it uses elements from the rest of the song. Uh, so it starts off with okay. It starts off with like the verse riff, but what you're doing is uh, just before you go to the eight eight five five of the verse riff, you're adding in the um, so you're doing that every time. Let me, let me, let me just, this is what it sounds like, and then I'll explain it to you. So it's open. So it's the open D. Pick it uh, seven times, and then add in the extra downstroke. So D. And then you do a very similar thing, but on the seventh space you're playing the seven uh, on the seventh space the power chord, and then you're picking on the seventh on the seventh fret. Okay, you play that twice, but the second time you don't go to the eight eight five five. Instead, you go to the, the like intro to the chorus, which is the. Okay, so so far the whole solo, if you put it together, this is what you have. Back to the, the main room. 
now you play it open and you just pick 16 notes for the rest of the bar and then another whole bar so you get that's everything I need to say about the solo. Like I said, it's just uh, it's kind of built up from different parts of the song, so if you can play the rest of the song and you can hear which parts of the uh, which parts are being played in the uh, like under the solo, then you'll be you should be should be fine. It's not it's not hard if you can do the rest of the song. Okay, so now you swing on the open and you just kind of let that let that hang there for a while and you know shadows things. He sings. Um, and then you come in again with the main I think you play that a couple times and then it goes to kind of an alternate version of this and what you do is now you're playing on the fifth string and you play seven eight open fifth string five seven on the fourth string so it's uh, on the fourth string seven eight with your third and fourth fingers open string a fifth string and then uh, with your first finger back on the fourth string on the fifth space five seven I think that's what's going on I can't hear perfectly but it's something something like that um, by the way this was like the, the first song that I ever kind of just learned to play by ear normally I just check out tabs and stuff um, and well I mean while we're on the topic let me I may as well just speak a bit about this um, I always kind of learned from tabs if there was a song that I wanted to play um, just because I'm not I don't have really good ears in terms of uh, hearing stuff you know like people some people can like they'll hear something and then they can kind of almost naturally figure it out like that and they know exactly what's going on that's not so much with me like I'm not I'm not a very musical person actually I just practice a lot so practice see practice can really do anything for you um, so yeah this is like the first song that I've transcribed by yeah what I'm trying to do is go through the whole album because I've got some really really sick like metal, old school metal stuff on it. So I want to go through the whole album and kind of figure out what's going on in each song. Um, so yeah, if some of the parts seem a bit off or sound funny to you, they may very well be wrong. I'm not saying that this is right. This is just my interpretation. If you come up with something else that sounds better to you, go for it. Um, okay, so you play the, the, the intro riff, the original riff. Couple times and then it goes to the alternate version. Give it some vibrato just to uh, give it some more character. And then what you do is you slide up, I think that riff plays like four times, then on the fourth time you can slide up to the 12th space of the fourth string, which is your D. That's your root note, maybe give it a pinch on it or something. It goes back into the chorus, yeah. And there's some like cool breakdowns, rhythmically speaking, where you know the band like stops. Uh, and then picks up like a, a half a beat later or something. So just listen to the song. I've given you all the notes that you need to know. Um, so now you just need to what? Well, I think is the best thing to do in terms of learning like this is to take each section and break it up and like perfect it. So take the intro bit that the uh, intro. And just get that down, get it perfect, get it nice and tight and then so practice, you know, break it up into sections, practice all the sections, and then start putting them together. So then move from the, the intro into the actual, into the verse. Um, 
that's pretty much all I've got to say about that. Um, I might do the solo video now, so if it's there, cool, check it out. Uh, like I said, it's a pretty hectic solo, but what I'm going to do is not, uh, I'm not going to teach you how to play the solo note for note. I'm just going to kind of speak about the ideas that you can uh, that you can look at when improvising. But anyway, that's the next video. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. Let me know what you thought, if it was a good idea. And also, especially if there's songs that you guys want to hear, because I'm, you know, I just thought this was a cool song and I knew how to play it. So I figured I'd show everyone. But if you have a song that you want me to check out, absolutely let me know. Otherwise, you're just going to be learning the crap that I like, which might be crap. So anyway, guys, thanks for watching. And I hope you enjoyed that. And go, go shred, go practice. Okay, I'll see you next time.